Hey guys, it's Troy here, and I have shared with you a few times that, you know, I'm not a huge proponent of or fan of pocket pens, but I do have some in my collection. Here we go. Here are all my pocket pens. So I've got some modern and some vintage, obviously, uh, like an Eversharp Bantam. I've got uh, a couple of Otos, Kaveco. Um, I've got one that has a snow white and, uh, nib on it, I think. Um, this was one of those I don't think I ever saw or could figure out what brand it was. Um, there was this neat little one that I found um, that was really cool looking that I picked up uh, from one particular seller that I, I knew I could trust. Um, as a matter of fact, I do believe this was put out um, by the Sauls company uh, under the uh, sub-brand of Favorite. Well, I've got another one put out by Sauls as a favorite brand and I'll show you a little more here on this one this one was actually given as a souvenir um, and uh, <laughs> I'll share with you a little more about what I went through on trying to get this one restored uh, and also I picked up one because I didn't have one in my collection that was like this uh, I picked up an Esterbrook this is an Esterbrook in pastel and obviously a pastel pink so uh, you can hazard a guess as to whether or not I'm going to keep this one for myself or not. Uh, but um, I did pick this one up, and this was like $23, I think, uh, which was not too bad for an Esterbrook. But one of the things uh, that I really didn't know is actually how small it was going to be. Um, just to give you an idea, next to an Esterbrook J, uh, there's a size comparison <laughs> for that. Uh, so much smaller than that. I'm assuming it's meant to be a pocket or a purse pen. Of course, it is still a 1940s lever filler. Um, and uh, I'll show you how well this one writes. And if you looked at one of my recent pen mail videos, I shared that I did pick up an Estabrook nib. Uh, and it was a manifold nib, a medium manifold nib. And that is what I put into this baby right here. Uh, so I'm interested to see how well that one writes. This one does still have some imprints on it. I'll try to get you some better close-up pictures of this stuff. But anyway, there you go. This particular nib on, on this particular pen was kind of a challenge. And you see how tiny it is even compared to that Esterbrook, right? Now you saw how small that was compared to like an Esterbrook J. Look at this one compared to an Esterbrook J. It is a midget of a pen. Uh, and... Uh, you know, oftentimes pens like this were called midget pens, <laughs> as politically incorrect nowadays as that may seem. But it is a nice, beautiful celluloid. I do kind of like, uh, you know, you've got the red, you've got the uh, several different um, colors of green marbled in there. And you've got like a silver uh, or overlay here. You've got a lever filler. Sometimes these were eyedropper as well. And then you've got on the, uh, the clip here, you do have the word favorite. When you open it up, you can see this is a super stub of a nib. It didn't start out that way. It actually started out um, that this was actually, um, you know, had a nice little tine on it. I say tine singular because one of them was broken. And I've run across this before and it's a little frustrating. I don't have any nibs this size. It's not like it's a standard number five nib. This is much smaller than a number five or number six, or even some of the other um, some of the other vintage nibs that I have laying around because it's a dinky little pen. Um, so I had to work with what I had. So what I do is I clip this down uh, to make the tines roughly even. I got out my Dremel tool, I ground it down a little bit, and I got out my uh, 1200 grit metal uh, finishing sandpaper and uh, smoothed it out some and then a little bit uh, with some micro mesh and so I made basically a dinky super stub out of that particular nib and the nib does say Peter Pan right on it so I'll show you some pictures of that as well um, it, there is an engraving here that uh, does say that this right here is a souvenir that's engraved right into the side of the pen I'll show you a better picture of that as well so Let's see how my Super Stub and my new Esterbrook actually write. 
Uh, yeah, I've been getting some ink on my fingers here from uh, restoring them. I, I, I got these finished here probably within the last half an hour. Actually, I finished uh, restoring them about an hour ago, let them cure um, and, uh, and sit so that um, the, the ink sacs would, um, would seal properly uh, and uh, eventually just ink them up. So this one here um, is, has got a Peter Pan nib. Uh, so this is probably from the Sauls company. Um, out of the 20s, they did hard rubber, and out of the 30s, they seem to have uh, gone into a celluloid. So I would put this pen somewhere in the 1930s or so. Um, this came out of Wilmar, Minnesota. Um, so the su a souvenir from Wilmar, Minnesota. So um, this now has a super stub. <laughs> super stub nib uh, that was my personal grind that's second or third nib I've had to do that too and it's a crying shame I wish I didn't have to do that but um, you know you can get a little bit of variation out of it just by simply pressing down some and you know, it's already a wet writer and I put into this pen uh, let's see I put in some color verse Schrodinger. H R O E Dinger. I think it's S C H R O E Dinger. I think. I'm just going by memory on this particular one. So there you go. There's that pen. Nice little celluloid pen. It looks a whole lot better than it did. It looks nice and shiny now. Got a lot of oxidation off from that uh, that cap ring and off from that clip as well as off from that lever. The lever was a little tough uh, and, it, and it wouldn't move when I first got it. Cleaned it all out. It still had a hard time uh, and it's a little stiff but uh, it works. <laughs> I just wish I didn't have to have the super stub. Alright, so let's move on to this Esterbrook pocket pen. So this is a, probably a 1940s Esterbrook. Uh, this is a pocket or a purse size. And uh, this one is obviously the pink pastel um, and I put in some Lamy hot pink and obviously too I don't know if you can tell this nib is really stiff and this nib was actually designed to be used when you are trying to use like carbon copies if those of you who are old enough to remember that uh, but um, you know th this particular nib here I'm telling you, it is a very stiff, 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 stiff. Uh, but this is a manifold medium. I think it was a 9460 uh, nib. It's a medium. Um, and you know, it's fairly smooth. It's not too bad. It's acceptable. Um, if I was going to use this one, I'd probably just use a little more smoothing on it, but it's very acceptable for what it is. It's, uh, I didn't expect a tremendous amount of it, but uh, I've pulled it up several times just to go play with it since I've gotten it, and it's been fairly, uh, fairly good. As far as it's, it hasn't given me any hard, hard starts, it's uh, written first time every time. The one flaw I can tell is that it was a pretty deep gouge or scratch on that cap uh, where it took off that pink finish but other than that it was actually in really good shape and it didn't take a whole lot both jewels are in place they're not chipped or anything uh, no major damage uh, to any of the the silver trim it actually did fairly well so there you go that's my pen mail for today 
two pocket pens have been added to my collection, one of which I'm most definitely going to give away here in just a little bit. Put a smile on my bride's face. Uh, and the other one, that little midget, you know, 10 bucks for that little pen. I just wish that it wasn't a super stub now and it was actually a regular tie nib. Uh, but that little pastel, you know, that's a neat little one. And I, uh, like I said, I picked it up because I wanted a pastel. Uh, I didn't have any pink pastels here in my Esterbrook collection. Um, and I definitely didn't have one that small. So, Hey, that's Pen Mail for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.